Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this section, we will look at a, an example for a transportation problem, uh, the Angma Block Company. So let's look at this situation as if we are performing consulting uh, services with this company. So the company has orders for 80 tons of concrete blocks. Now, you have to imagine in your mind, does this fit uh, on the left-hand side? Who is on the left-hand side? The factory, the source, the giving away locations, right? And who fits onto the right-hand side? Who are the customers, the receiving ends, the destinations, for example? It may be that no party is being mentioned, but a location is being mentioned. Someone will handle that, but that's to be uh, delivered to this location. Then that will be the destination. And also you must make sure along the way to listen for uh, the, the, the SKU. Remember, what is that single item? being transported do we have that is it clearly identified and then are we are the customers interested in only the quantities uh, then if so all the characteristics have matched our pattern for transportation problem right then we know it is transportation problem and we whip out the model right away so the 80 tons of concrete blocks uh, we don't know how to under understand that yet we can see that it is at three sub urban locations now the three locations can be source can be destinations uh, but let's look at that uh, has orders who gives orders who gives orders does the supplier give order or customer gives orders now supplier doesn't give order to customer right uh, supplier gives gives uh, invoice please pay customer gives orders to suppliers and demands for this kind or this quantity of goods so it means that the company here, Agma Block, has customers ordering 80 tons of concrete blocks. Now, concrete blocks, those are huge, I don't know, one ton, two ton concrete blocks, very, very heavy, at three locations. So the three locations will have to be interpreted as customers. So in our mind, we should place them on the right side. So yeah, they are, they are specified. In fact, they have demands for, clearly, 25 tons, 45 and 10 tons. So we know D1, D2, D3, the demands are clearly stated. ECMA has two plants. See that? New players coming in and we have the left hand side unfilled. So we try, right? We see if it still makes sense. Suppose if the two plants, the factories producing the good, uh, the, the concrete blocks are to be the two sources on the left, each of which can produce 50 tons per week per week notice the time period per week and we said that earlier on in our previous discussion that for the transportation template to be uh, applied we need a bounded time to talk about the capacity because if you do not have a bounded time then if you have infinite time basically any capacity will be fulfilled right yeah so uh, and, and the demand needs to be for a certain period of time because the demand will grow if your company is doing well and it should so uh, for one week so our planning is for one week but that per week uh, data is just held on the background we know that this is to be executed over a week not a day not an hour right so uh, just just hold it in the background to know that all the numbers referred to are on a per week basis and that's all but we need this uh, notion of per week right now uh, each of which can produce 50 tons so s1 s2 equal to 50 so great, we have all the numbers on left and right side. Now we need to see if we can get from the question, the CIJs, the cost of delivering one ton from factory one, plant one, to each of the customer. And indeed, we, we have delivery cost per ton. It is on a unit variable uh, cost basis, variable based on the quantities delivered, the, the tonnage delivered. So great, we have all the CIJs. We have the D1s, D, D2s, the S1, S2s. So now we are ready to not start thinking, but just copy and paste, right? So this part I like to emphasize is very quickly fleshed out. No thinking or very little thinking is involved because we just copy and paste, right? And redefine the variables to, to, so that they make sense. And that's all. It is indeed our S1, S2, D1, D2, D3 rehash into plant one, plant two, northwood, westwood, eastwood. So the idea is not to think from scratch, which is slow, and then we might repeatedly generate errors and mistakes. 
uh, but instead to copy and paste the template and flash it out here. Okay, so very quickly we know we have two sources which have two constraints. We have three customers which have three equalities. Set them to non negative and also, yes, integer. All right, constraints, and then we are done. Yeah. Uh, the integer notion here is more because the blocks are blocks. They are not going to be partial blocks. They are ordered by tons. So either you have one ton or you have no ton. It's not going to be uh, 0 0.25 tons, right? We do not assume they shave off partially. So if that's the case, then definitely have the integer. Integer is safe for most transportation problems, especially when applied to logistics issues. Uh, <laughs> because of the way businesses are done, they have to account for each and every a packet, box, carton, uh, whatever it is, right? So it's all accounted for and it has to be done in integer fashion. So well, why don't we just go on to our Excel, have a look. And this indeed is uh, giving us the kind of uh, setup, right? Some product of all the cost per unit against the, the decision variables so far unknown, so is zero, right? So we have the total sum, the total tonnage from plan 1 not exceeding 50, from plan 2 not exceeding 50. It's all doing the same implementation as per the, the model. right? So then the total incoming plan, uh, tonnage into north would, either from plan 1 or 2, must exactly equal to 25, westward exactly equal to 45, eastward exactly equal to 10. So in solving this, Right, we are also able to use the same uh, cell and setup and the formulas to solve for other similar transportation problems. So here we can uh, add, right, for the decision variables to be integer. Remember how we did it earlier on in a previous section? So once we do that, we see that we can just set the simplex LP, solve it, and we have found a solution. Okay, now um, we should check that the, uh, the ignore integer constraints is not set. Huh? Uh, once we do that, we find that we have an integer solution and this solution is like that. So what does it say? It says, well, uh, as a scheduler for this factory for ENGMA, we know that we will send out five tons from plant one to Northwood 20 tons the rest from plant 2 to northwood in so doing we satisfy 25 tons to northwood now it's true right for building we just need the the, the tons right the, the the mass of the of the blocks to help in the construction we don't really care whether it's from plant 1 or plant 2 so in such cases it's an excellent application of the, the transportation problem next thing just very quickly i want to show you that uh, if we remove this integer constraint, we'll find that we can actually solve it and get exactly the same answer. All right, there, there's no difference and they are still by chance integer. And that does not mean that we can therefore take away the integer constraint. Uh, I, I say the word by chance is because all the numbers, coefficients, etc. they are all integer so it ends up in such a way that it is uh, also integer. They are kind of like nice multiples of easy factors two, three, five, and all that. So, so it turns out that it's, it's nicely done. But this is not always the case, right? Because if you tweak some of the coefficients where prime numbers and all that stuff that are involved, very easily you will, you will have, right? You will have decimal answers. That means you're solving the LP relaxation problem. So uh, definitely make sure that you have your integer constraint uh, so that it will give you the right tonnage to be deployed. Right, so that ends our discussion for the, the uh, example.